in this lesson, we want to review the concept of absolute value. So let's just start out with the basic definition. The absolute value of a number is the distance between the number and zero on the number line. So if I was to ask you for the absolute value of, let's just say the number six, you could find the number six on the number line and you could count the number of units away it is from zero. So if we take this here from six and we go one, two, three, four, five, and then six, you'll see that six is six units away from zero on the number line. So the absolute value of six is just six. Now, similarly, if we looked at negative six, you'd find that it has the exact same absolute value. We start here and we go one, two, three, four, five, six units to the right to get to zero. So this leads us to an important concept. Two numbers that lie on the opposite side of the number line with the same absolute value are known as opposites. So we've talked about opposites before. So six and negative six would be opposites. Three and negative three would be opposites. Four and negative four. 122 and negative 122, you know, so on and so forth. One important property here, and we talked about this in a previous review session, if you add two opposites together, you get a result of zero. Think about adding negative six and six. Well, if I started at zero and I went six units to the left, and then I went six units to the right, and ended up back at zero. It's because their weight or absolute value is going to cancel each other out. Right? One is negative, one is positive. They have the same absolute value. So they cancel and they end up in the middle, which is at zero. So in general, we don't need to pull out a number line every time we want to find the absolute value. We can follow a very, very simple rule. The absolute value of some real number A is just A if A is non-negative, meaning A is greater than or equal to zero. So if you have zero or some positive number, you take the absolute value, it's just the number. So in our example, we took the absolute value of six, it was just six, right? You just use the number. The absolute value of some real number A is the opposite or the negative of A if A is less than zero. So if I had something like the absolute value of negative six, this would be equal to the opposite of negative six, which is just six, right? You don't even need to go through all this. Just know that if you take the absolute value of something that's negative, you just make it positive. Right, so if I had the absolute value of negative 122, I would just make the number positive. I know this is 122. Similarly, if I had the absolute value of, let's say, negative 1,322,515, what would I do? I would just make the number positive. Let me kind of erase this to get a little room. So I would just take this number and say, okay, it's 1,322,515, right? Just make it positive. So if it's zero or a positive number, it's just the number. If it's a negative number, just make it positive. Okay, that's all you really need to remember about finding the absolute value of a number. It's very, very simple. All right, so now let's think a little bit deeper about the concept of absolute value, especially in terms of what we're going to see in this course. If we think about a statement such as the absolute value of x is greater than 5. So what does this mean? Let's break this down so that you can understand it. The absolute value of a number, again, is the distance from the number to zero on the number line. So what this is saying right here is any number here that has a distance from zero that is larger or greater than five, okay? So x can be any number whose distance from zero is larger than five. So if I start at zero and I go in the right direction, five units, and kind of circle this here at five. If I start at zero and I go left five units, and I circle this here at negative five. So what does that tell me? Well, x could be anything larger than five. We know from interval notation that we can kind of mark this this way. You could put a parenthesis here to say that five is not included, and I could shade everything to the right. And x could be anything less than negative 5. So I could put a parenthesis at negative 5 facing to the left, and I could shade everything to the left like this, right? So anything in between here, so from 5 to negative 5, with 5 and negative 5 included, would not work, 
because in those situations, the values would not have a distance from zero that is larger than five. So as an example, let's say I took negative one. If I plug that in for X, what would I get? So the absolute value of negative one, is that greater than five? No. The absolute value of negative one is what? I just told you if you have a negative number, just make it positive. So this evaluates to one is greater than five, which is false. One is not greater than five. If I plug five in there, the absolute value of five is five. Five is not greater than five. That doesn't work. If I plug in negative five, the absolute value of negative five is five. Five is not greater than five. That doesn't work. So all these numbers in between here don't work. But if I chose something that is to the right of five or to the left of negative five, that would work. If I chose seven, for example, let's see what happens there. The absolute value of seven is seven. Seven is greater than five. So we're good. If I chose, let's say negative nine. Okay, let's say negative nine. The absolute value of negative nine is nine. Nine is greater than five, so that works. So if we wanted to write our solution, we could say that X could be anything larger than five, or, okay, you use the or statement here, X could be anything that is less than negative five either situation would work. In interval notation, we would use our union symbol. So we would have the interval from negative infinity, let me make that symbol better, up to but not including negative five. And it's this set, and we're gonna have a union with this set. So anything larger than five, again, out to positive infinity. So this is how you would write it kind of using the standard notation where you know, you're using inequality symbols, and this is how you would write it using interval notation, and this is how you could display this graphically. Now let's think about the other scenario we have here. And this is kind of a trick question. So before I even read it, why don't you see if you can think about this one on your own? So I assume you tried this, and hopefully you figured out that this is, again, a trap. If you see this on a test, you should be able to answer right away all real numbers. Why is that the case? Well, the absolute value of x is greater than negative four. Okay, let's think about that. Again, give me a number here that you take the absolute value of it and it's larger than negative four. Well, it doesn't matter what I plug in there. If I plugged in a negative number, the absolute value would make it positive, okay? If I plugged in zero, the absolute value would make it zero. If I plugged in a positive number, it would keep it positive. So anything I plug in is always going to be greater than negative four because the smallest this can be is if X is zero. So the absolute value of zero is zero. So zero is automatically greater than negative four. And that's as small as this can be using the absolute value operation. Okay. Again, if I plugged in something negative, let's say I plugged in negative six there. The absolute value of negative six is six. Six is larger than negative four. So you see that no matter what I plug in for X, it would work. So we say all real numbers. Okay, you could say it like that. You could do all kinds of different ways to notate this. You could say, you know, the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. You could shade the entire number line graphically, right? You could take and just shade this entire thing to show that any real number on the real number line would be a solution for your inequality here. All right, so let's look at the other scenario here. So we start out with the absolute value of X is less than two. So again, when I think about X, it's, it's gonna be any value whose absolute value or distance from zero is smaller or less than two. So if I started at zero and I went one and then two, so it couldn't be negative two. Right? It couldn't be negative two because it can't actually go two units. It's got to be less than that. So let's kind of notate this by putting a parenthesis at negative two facing to the right. And I could do the same thing. I could travel one, two. It can't quite be two. So I'm going to put a parenthesis here facing to the left. I could just shade everything in between. So essentially what I have here is a scenario where X can be any number that's between negative two and two with negative two and two not included. Right? So in interval notation, that's the interval from negative two to two. Again, neither is included, so I use a parenthesis at each end. And you can try this out with 
let's say the number negative one. So you plug in a negative one there, the absolute value of negative one is one. So you would have that one is less than two, which is true. If you tried something outside of this range here, let's say you tried three. The absolute value of three is three, three is not less than two, so that doesn't work. If you tried, let's say negative five, the absolute value of negative five is five, five is not less than two. So again, you've gotta be within this range here to have an absolute value or a distance from zero that is smaller than two. So that's your solution there. And you could also write this as x is greater than negative two and less than two. Okay, so kind of three different ways to show the solution there. All right, let's think about another one. And again, I advise you to kind of stop the video here and think about this one. What's going on here? Because I'm going to tell you in advance this is a trick one. All right, so I assume you tried this and you would see that there's no solution here. And why is there no solution? Again, x represents a number whose absolute value is less than negative three. Can absolute value be negative? Just think about that for a second. Can it be negative? No, it has to be either zero, if you're plugging in zero, or positive. If I plug in a negative, I get a positive. If I plug in a zero, I get a zero. If I plug in a positive, I get a positive. So there's no way that the absolute value of something can be less than negative three. It's not possible. It has to be zero or larger. So there's no solution here. There's no solution. Okay, you can write no solution or a lot of teachers will say, make the symbol for the null or empty set because the solution set here has no elements. And again, if I'm going over your head there, just write no solution. That's all you really need for the majority of the classes. So the last thing we wanna think about in this lesson on absolute value is how to find the distance between two points on a number line. So this is a very, very easy thing to do. And we have a very simple formula that we'll see in a second. So the distance between two points on a number line is the absolute value of the difference between their coordinates in any order. So in other words, if I wanted to find the distance between, let's say six and let's say negative one. Well, what this is telling me is that I can say the absolute value of six minus a negative one would give me the distance between the two. So six minus a negative one would be six plus one, that's seven. So I'd want the absolute value of seven, which is just seven. I could also, because this says in any order, I could flip this around. So I could say the absolute value of negative one minus six, and the absolute value of negative one minus six is the absolute value of negative seven, which again is also seven. So kind of the order doesn't matter here because of that absolute value operation, it's gonna end up taking the sign in disregarding it, right? If you get a positive seven, it's still seven. If you get a negative seven, it makes it positive seven. So the order isn't gonna matter here because of the absolute value operation. So officially, you'll see this in your textbook. If P and Q are points, and don't get confused by P and Q, P and Q are just something we can use to label the points. So in this example here where I said, we wanna find the distance between six and negative one on the number line, I could label this guy as P, I could label this guy as Q, right? Or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. So if P and Q are points of the number line with coordinates A and B, so when we say coordinates, that refers to the number on the number line itself. And then we'll say the distance between the two points is given by this formula here. So the distance between P and Q is equal to the absolute value of B minus A, or the distance between P and Q is equal to the absolute value of A minus B. So again, we can change the order around and get the same result because of this absolute value operation. So let's look at a sample problem here. We wanna find the distance between negative three and six. So here's negative three and here's six. If I was to just count the units out, I could start at negative three and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, so they're nine units apart. If I started at negative three and went to six, it takes me nine units to get there. If I started at six and went back to negative three, it would also take me nine units to get there. But again, we don't wanna do that each time. We don't wanna to have to pull out a number line. We want a formula and that formula tells us to subtract right, one coordinate from the other. It doesn't matter the order because we're gonna do this inside of the absolute value operation. So I could say the absolute value of negative three minus six which would be equal to the absolute value of negative nine, which would be nine, 
Again, that's what we found by just counting. We could also flip this around. We could say the absolute value of six minus a negative three. So six minus a negative three is the same as six plus three. So this would be the absolute value of nine, which is nine. So either way we do it, if we do negative three minus six, that gives us negative nine. When we take the absolute value, we get nine. If we do six minus a negative three, that gives us six plus three, which is nine. If we take the absolute value, it's still nine. So again, because of the absolute value operation, the order here doesn't matter. All right, let's look at one more. So we want to find the distance between negative four and negative seven. So here's negative four, here's negative seven. You can eyeball that and see it's three units, right? One, two, three, they're three units away from each other. And again, to use our formula, we could do negative seven minus a negative four inside of absolute value bars. So this would be negative seven minus a negative four is negative seven plus four. So that would be the absolute value of negative three, which is three. Or again, we could change the order around. Right? Inside of absolute value bars, we could say negative 4 minus a negative 7. Negative 4 minus a negative 7 is negative 4 plus 7. That would be positive 3. So the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Again, because of the absolute value operation, the order here doesn't matter. Once we evaluate, if we get negative 3, the absolute value of that is 3. If we get positive 3, the absolute value of that is 3. So either way you do it, you end up with 3 as the distance between negative four and negative seven on the number line.